will always forget that thing. If I had to get sound man, he turned it on for me. Yeah. Yeah, he cuts off. He's, he's tried that, but it always cuts off on me. <laughs> She's agreeing with me. I don't know, Miss Jill. Yeah, that's right. Miss Jill, how does it feel to be American citizen? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tickled for you. I'm so tickled for you. It is great. It is great. Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter 24. We'll be have a rather lengthy text this evening. <laughs> Y'all pray for my voice. Um, I was running around outside last night. We won't talk about why I was running around outside. Uh, but it, yeah, oink, oink, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we about dispatched them a little early, Brother Mike, but uh, <laughs> I was running around uh, last night, and in the cold weather, for some reason, when I run and get the breathing heavy, it really affects my, my lungs, and so uh, my voice has kind of been giving me a fit all day, and so y'all pray for me that I don't take into a hacking fit. If I do, it just sound like some of them old mountain preachers, <laughs> but uh, that's not what I'm going for, <laughs> I promise you. That's, Jack's got it, boy. He might turn into one of them old hackers one day. You never know. Uh, so here in Luke chapter number 24, when you find your place in verse 36, let's all stand together. Luke chapter 24 and verse 36. I had to look over my shoulder there and make sure I hadn't told the kids to sing and they were standing over there. I've done that before and I kind of felt bad about it. And then I realized it was my kids and I didn't matter. Luke chapter 24, verse number 36. The Bible says, and as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed, not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish of, uh, and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms according or concerning me then opened he their understanding thank God for that that they might understand the scriptures and he said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. You can be seated this evening. And I thank you so much for standing. I know it's a bit of a lengthy text, but to set our point this evening, I wanted to read all of that. We find here in Luke chapter number 24, verses 36 through 53, we find that here is right before Christ's ascension back to heaven there with his Father. And so we see here what is happening is that these people are struggling. The, the disciples are struggling to understand well, how there can be peace with them when they are scared to death and when things are all around them. Would you agree with me this evening that fear comes about us because of an onset in our own minds? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but yet, Brother Don, we are fearful of things that we have no control over. I have been fearful over things I have 
zero control over. I have been fearful over things within my Christian life that I have no control over. In my uh, personal life, I have no control over. But yet, Brother Mike Brown, I will worry myself to death because I don't understand how God can fix it. I don't understand how nor why God will do things. I don't know if I, I've probably said this here before, but understanding is, is a strange thing. See, people will say, well, I don't understand how God can forgive you for who you are. I don't understand how God can do this or how God can do that. Well, like I've said before, I don't understand how a brown cow can eat green grass and make white milk, but it's pretty good. I'm glad they do. So I don't have to understand that, Brother Matt, but people feel like they have to understand all the ins and outs of what God can do. You'll never understand it. We'll never understand all the ins and outs of it. So, verse 45, verse 45 of Luke 24, the Bible says, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. Another word for understanding is their mind, which means that Christ opened their minds that they might understand the Scriptures. Are you thankful for the day that Christ opened up your mind to where you could understand the Scripture? See, I'm thankful this evening I have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Ghost of God living within me that helps teach me the Scriptures, right? Helps me the understanding, gives me that understanding in which I can understand what the Scriptures are saying. Now, the second time that the word understand is used here in verse 45, the first one is he opened up their understanding, opened up their mind to understand the Scriptures. The second time, that they might understand the scriptures. That second time I understand he used the word, it comes from a word that means to comprehend. He helps us to comprehend the scriptures. This evening I want to preach a message entitled, Do We Have an Open Mind? Now, let me preface this message by that title. We're not to have an open mind to sin. We're not to have an open mind to, oh, well, just let them live how they want to, Brother Matt, and be accepting of what they... Listen, we live in a world that wants to be accepting of everything except for this Bible. They want to be accept... Oh, accept this, accept sin, accept how this person wants... Accept that a man wants to be a woman because he said so. That just don't make no sense to me. Right? I, I'm going to identify as a 70-year-old man. Can I start getting retirement? Hey Amen. I ought to be able to, right? I, I'll be a 70-year-old woman too. I don't care. Just send me a check. They won't let me do that. Everybody wants to be open-minded about everything but this Bible. Now, if we're going to truly be open-minded, we're going to have to be open-minded about the Word of God. Yeah. So I want to ask us this evening, do we have an open mind? Do we have an open mind to truth? <laughs> Because truth is not always pleasant. Truth is not always comfortable. But Brother Matt, truth is always truth. Any way you cut it. And there's no amount of disagreement that's going to happen that will change truth from being truth. So for a few minutes this evening, let's talk about this, this subject. Do we have an open mind? Brother Mike McPhail have, or Brother Mike Brown, how about you pray for us? Help us. Amen. We live in a world where we are told that we shouldn't be closed-minded. We live in a world that people say that if you don't accept somebody for what they are, that you're being closed-minded. Yet, however, we do live in a world that whenever you start giving them the truth of the Bible, they sense right up and they close their minds up. And so we, this evening, must be open-minded. Rather, we must be open-minded people um, uh, to the Word of God. This, this world believes that an open-minded person is someone who is progressive and growing and, and evolving. But what that statement suggests is what's happening in the Scripture here is totally different, completely different than being open-minded to everything. What the Scripture is teaching us right here, Brother Mike Brown, is that we are to be open-minded to the truth of God's 
word. Now, has everybody in here, when you read the Bible, agreed with everything it said? Now, don't be all spiritual on me. It's, well, of course I have. No, you haven't. Ain't there one of us looked at the Bible and read something that hurt and said, well, I like that. <laughs> right? It stings a little bit, right? Does it make it wrong because it hurts? Does it make it wrong because we don't necessarily agree with it? Does it make it wrong? No, absolutely not. We're wrong because the Bible tells us let God be true and every man a liar. If I'm a man and I don't agree with it, then I'm a liar. We got to be open-minded to the Scriptures. So the Scriptures here tonight suggest that we are to be open-minded to the Word of God. When society talks about it, the intention is to move people away from being narrow-minded is what they'll say. Or in many ways, it's a condemnation for believing in moral absolutes or basically being a Bible believer. I was speaking to someone one time about uh, moral relativism and moral absolutes. And he was telling me that there are no moral absolutes. And so we were talking, and he was talking about homosexual marriage at the time, and he said, hey, who am I to tell somebody who they're able to love? I said, hey, Alex, I get it, man. I said, who are you to tell somebody who they're able to love? I said, when that 50-year-old man comes over and he had, a, he had a one-year-old baby, I said, when she's about eight years old, that 50-year-old man walks over and says, hey, I want to marry your daughter. She loves me and I love her. Who are you to tell him? He said, you got me. I said, does that change the way you think? Of course it didn't. But it did in that certain perspective. So it's okay to tell somebody who they can do this to it, it, as long as it don't affect me. No, 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 no. Either we're going to stand for truth or we're not. So we're, we're going to either have an open mind for what God says or we're not going to have an open mind at all as this world thinks that we should have. These people that see us and people like us say that we are closed-minded and ignorant. As it is with most things, they're wrong. <laughs> it, 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 it's actually just the opposite. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Turn with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Have you ever noticed that whenever you get into a, a conversation with someone that disagrees with you and you have Bible to back you up and you have Bible to back up where you stand and every time you start giving them Bible, either their voice starts raising up and they start getting mad or they just walk away. You might ever notice that it's hard to have a civil conversation when you bring that. Why well, you always got to bring that Bible into it? Well, because that Bible is my final authority. Amen. I'm thankful for my Bible. You there with me in 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse number 14. We've talked about this a lot here recently. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. People who believe the scriptures are the ones who are open-minded. We are open-minded if we believe the scriptures because open to truth resonates from a higher power. If we are open to the truth, Brother Mike Brown, open to the truth of the word of God, where does that come from? That resonates from a higher power. That don't come from me. There's no way in myself. I just, we just all agreed that we don't always agree reading the scriptures because it hurts sometimes. Now, spiritually, we're, we're, we're all super spiritual in here, and I know, and none of us would ever disagree with the Bible. But if you get truthful with yourself, there's things we read sometimes. And at the end of the day, we're like, yep, Lord, that's right, because that's what you said. But the first read of it's kind of like, ah, did I read that right? Why do we got to reread stuff so much? Right? We got to reread it and say, oh, is that right? I don't know if that's right or not. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, of course it's right. It's God's word. So it comes from a higher power because in me, I'm not going to understand. I'm not going to really accept what's being said. Unfortunately, those who do not or cannot do so because the depravity or their inability, those who cannot understand or will not understand the word of God. We must be. As children of God this evening, I believe I'm talking to majority of the congregation saved folk. And if me as a saved person struggles with having an open mind towards spiritual things, then why do we get so upset with the others, with loved ones that struggle with living right when we know they're lost? 
Now, I'm not saying don't have a burden for them. I'm not saying don't live holy in front of them. I'm not saying don't witness to them. I never would say don't pray for them. But it's hard for me to condemn them, Brother Matt, when I struggle with spiritual things as well. Because my mind's not always open to the truth of God's Word. And I have the Holy Spirit living within me. Now, I understand this message here is not real comfortable because this is going to hit us where we live at. A lot of this is going to hit us where we live at. But those folks live in their depravity as well as their inability. It's why we are told in Matthew 5.13 to be, ye are the salt of the earth. We're, we're called to be the salt of the earth. And guys, the Lord plainly says that if we've lost our savor, wherein shall it be salted? If we lose our saltiness, Brother Mike Brown, what kind, what kind of pull do we have on this world? If I lose being salty around folks that I'm in the community with, if I'm not salty in my Christianity around them, we just talked about this a little while ago in our visitation meeting, that people are coming up to Christians at workplaces, out in the community saying, hey, can you pray for me? That's living a salty Christianity. That's living not only a Saudi Christianity, but in the next verse, it talks about being the light of the world. That's being a light into a lost and dying world. That's what we are to be. We're to be a beacon of hope to this community. Not only resonating out of this building, but as individuals as we go out in our separate ways. We are to be a beacon of hope. Now, are we going to be able to be the salt and the light if we're closed-minded towards the truth of God's word? The answer is no if any of y'all ain't paying attention. That's a no. That want to trick you. Those who are blessed to have their minds open to biblical truth have the responsibility to live that truth. Amen. And we have the responsibility to live that truth in the presence of those whose minds are closed to it. Where does this come from in, in, in this series? We know our minds, as we've talked about since the very beginning, are affected by the fall. We also know that our minds, uh, our mind is a place where the majority of spiritual warfare happens. We've talked about that in the past. We've talked about that from the fall, that battle, the first battle took place here on earth was there in the garden. And then Brother Mike, here comes uh, all the warfare beyond that. I battle in my mind. I, I, I know you battle in your mind and, and we all struggle from time to time. It don't have to be a daily battle, but truth be known, it is a battle from time to time. You know you can start the day off. Miss Candy, we can start the day off 100% going for God and everything's great. Oh, just whistling and skipping along and the next thing you know, pow. What happened? We get off the rails somewhere and our mind starts affecting us. Somebody says something to us. We read something. And it throws us for a loop. Brother Reggie, if we are living as the Bible points us to live, those little things won't affect us. You know why they won't affect us? What did Paul say that he does daily? I die daily. You know what he said? I die daily. Now, we've all been around folks before, funeral homes or things of that nature. They ain't feeling nothing. You can't hurt their feelings. You can't hurt their body. So if I am to be a Christian, Brother Mike, that dies daily, then all those names that I get called should not bother me. It shouldn't bother me. Because I am to be dead to those things. I am to keep my mind on God and not let those little things bother me. So an open mind is one that is being instructed and fashioned by the Scriptures. Does that make sense? 
If I have an open mind, then Brother Matt, this is what's dictating what I do. This is my final authority. This right here is what's fashioning me into the man that stands before you if I am having an open mind to the Word of God. It will both empower the believer as well as will represent the Lord well if we have that open mind. Now, what can we learn from having an open mind? What can we learn from that? I want you to look that there is a need for having an open mind. Uh, in, in Luke 24, look in verse 36, there's a need for it. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit and he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold your hands and, and behold my hands and my feet. That is, I myself handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. These folks here were gripped with fear. They had no peace and they were troubled. Now, why is that? Look at that scripture. Why would you think that is? Because they failed to believe and act on what they had been taught. They failed to believe and act in what they knew was coming. Christ told them he was going to resurrect. Christ told them that I will be back. He told them, Brother Matt, that in three days I'll raise this temple back up. But yet, they were fearful. They were scared. Why? I'm not knocking them. Miss Cat, I'd have probably been the same way. Because in my little human finite mind, Brother Mike McPhail, I would have heard it, but I don't know that I would have believed it fully. Now, we can sit here this evening and act like we would have. But none of us know until faced with it. I'm just being honest with you and telling you, I probably would have been the same way as these guys. It probably scared me to death if we're being truthful. You know what that proves to me in that scripture right there? At this time, they didn't have an open mind to truth. Their mind was on what they believed. He's gone. He's gone. That couldn't be who we think it is because he's gone. We saw him die. We saw them put him in that tomb. Right? We have to make sure that we as Christians tonight understand the truth of God's Word, not be closed-minded as they were many times in Christ's earthly ministry. Jesus gave them great instructions concerning the resurrection, yet they failed to believe and comply in faith. The result was a very defeated and troubled life. And guys, that's what happens to us when we live closed-minded to biblical truth. We pay a high price of living a defeated and even just as important a non-impactful life for the Lord. <clears throat> when <clears throat> everything has been happening in our world, in our country, we can see that we're headed for a mess. We're headed for a mess, but the way the body of Christ handles it should be different than the way the world handles it. You won't find that. You'll find most churches that will be freaking out and going crazy over Oh, I'm going to lose my income. Oh, I'm going to lose this. Oh, we're not going to have no food. Oh, we're going to lose this industry. We're going to lose that industry. They're, they're going to make us where we have to live off. Hey, look, it happens. What's worrying about it going to take care of? Prepare. Be prepared. But worrying ain't going to fix nothing. What we need to do is make sure we got an open mind towards the Scripture. What does the Scripture say <clears throat> concerning the righteous? He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Y'all believe our God's big enough to take care of us? Y'all believe our God's big enough to fix any kind of our need that we may have? Y'all believe God's big enough that we will be able to eat? I believe so. 
That's the God I serve. And Miss Robin, if I didn't believe that, and I lived a defeated life, as many uh, many folk that go to church will live a defeated life, and then they have zero influence on the people that they're around because they're just as worried as the world. Man, I'm glad I got hope this evening. I'm glad I've got hope. That living a non-impactful life. See, there's a need to have an open mind because I don't want to be defeated and I want to impact this world around me. Now I want you to see the process. The process of having an open mind. The process of having an open mind is found in Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scripture. Now the process is where God combats an error in our lives with truth. The error that we have is it's not easy for us to understand Truth. Now, let me say it like this. Unfortunately, our makeup, we believe a falsehood before we'll believe a truth. In a lot of places, we'll believe, we'll believe, no, we'll believe people that we don't even know over our own friends because the truth, a lot of times, harder to believe than a lie. God has to overcome that in our own lives. And we have to allow Him to overcome that in our own lives. The process is that God combats that error. That truth will enlighten us. We need to understand that truth will enlighten us and replace whatever is weakening us or defeating us. Now, with all of that, what will that bring us? If we allow God to change our thinking, if we allow Him to open our understanding to all of His truth, what will that give us? It will give us victory. Who wants victory over their mind? I do. Who wants victory over the negative thoughts, Miss Jill, that we have in our lives? I do. Brother Larry, who wants victory over all this garbage that is coming into our minds on a daily basis that we can live for God in this sinful world. I want victory over that garbage. You know why that stuff hit, enters our minds? Because I'm not effective toward God when my mind has all that slush in it. Would you agree with that? How can we pray effectively? How can we witness effectively if we're so bogged down with the garbage of this world? We pay a high price for it. In their case here, it's fear that's gripping their hearts. It's fear that's holding them down. Because the recent activities, you gotta think, these guys had just seen Christ crucified a few days earlier. Then here they are faced with the resurrection. And, and, and here he is talking about the ascension here in just a, in just a short time. And these guys are probably overwhelmed with what's going on. Brother Matt, it seems that no matter how many times God comes through in our life, no matter how many times we see see Him get us through things, Brother Reggie, we always question whether He can do it again. Always. Let me ask a serious question this evening. It's one I've asked before and one that you know that you have probably thought about before. But why is it we can trust God for salvation not knowing hardly anything about Him other than I'm convicted that I need a Savior. I need to repent of what I am and what I believe and trust in Him. Why is it without any knowledge of God hardly except a little bit we get preached to we can trust Him for eternity in heaven? No problem. But to fix a hangnail, I don't know about all that. To to supply a need, I don't know about all that. 
Has God ever come through and supplied a need of yours? I'd say all of us say a hearty amen right there. And here we are, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years down the road, serving God, and we still struggle with the simple stuff. Brother Mike, why do you reckon that is? It's closed mind to the truth. It's closed mind to the truth of God. See, the message this evening is that we have an open mind towards truth. God, Jesus had to open their understanding to the truth. He told them over and over many times. And I didn't go look at how many times. I didn't do the research on it. But many times he spoke to them about the resurrection. This is going to happen. And then whenever he appeared in front of them, hey, it's me. There's like, ah, scared. Fear. Hey, I'd have probably, I'd have probably hid in the bow of the boat. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I'd have probably been, I might have jumped overboard and took off swimming. And probably, there's a spirit. Oh my goodness. But they knew it was coming or they had heard it was coming. Haven't we heard that he'll take care of us? Haven't we heard the truths that he wants us to know? Haven't we heard that he'll take care of us? But we're closed-minded and think, no, I'll do it myself. Miss Jilly can't do it. You and I had a fantastic conversation this afternoon. And I'll be honest with you. It helped me. It helped me. See, God comes through whenever we can't see it. God's our protector all the time. God holds us in His arms constantly, no matter the situation. God will lead us where we need to go. But it takes us understanding, comprehending that He loves us, comprehending that He'll lead us and not pushing Him away. See, when we got a closed mind towards those things, we push God away. They had seen the cru crucifixion. They had seen the resurrection. Let me give you a couple of examples here this evening. In Jonah chapter 3 and verse number 10, we'll turn to a couple. This one here I'll just read for you. And God saw their works, and they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil. And he... And he had said that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it. Now, here, here God repented of evil he said he was going to do to them. Repented of what he said he was going to do, and he did it not to them. An entire city was spared because they opened their mind to God's word. Now, how did they do that? We know the account of Jonah going over Nineveh, right? Brother Matt, what caused that? They repented when the Word of God was preached. Am I right? Write that reference down and go look at it. And you'll say, preacher was right. But that's what happened there. The entire city was spared. When the, what is going to happen to this community? Miss Julie, when we have an open mind and we go into this world preaching the truth and God opens their minds, and their understanding. What can happen in down east Maine? Oh my. You say nothing. You don't know my God then. Your mind's too closed off. Time to open your mind to the truth of what God's saying. Acts 2.38. Go ahead and go over to Acts 2.38. Let's look at Acts 2.38. This is always one of them. I giggle every time I see this scripture. Every time I read this scripture. Had something happen that, oh, I guess Lighthouse was just barely a chartered church at that time and had a guy sitting on the front row and he liked this scripture a little too much. Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Over 3,000 were saved 
when they opened their minds. But what did it take? It took somebody having an open mind and preaching it. It took somebody having an open mind and believing it and going out. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Would they have ever done that if Peter hadn't had an open mind and believed God to do it? No. They opened their minds to their condition and responded in faith. Opening our minds in this manner often means identifying an error in our lives and agreeing with God and repenting from what we were. See, that's where we get. I repented at salvation. I repented of my unbelief of who Christ was and what He did for me and my need for a Savior. I'm done repenting. I'm going to live my life and do what I want to do. Mm -mm. That's having a closed mind. Miss Linda, we got to have an open mind that we understand what God would have for us to do. We follow in what God would have for us to do and not only know what He'd have us do, but we do it. Yeah. Agree with God. Know what you are. Agree with God. Look at the results when open, having an open mind is achieved. Look in, back in our text in Luke 24, and I'm almost finished. i got about 20, 30 more verses for you to look at. We're almost done. <laughs> Back in our text, Luke 24, verse 50. The Bible says, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. First of all, when you open your mind to the truth of God's Word, you receive the blessings of the Lord. Isn't that what happened? Right after the Bible says that he opened their understanding. That they could understand the scriptures. Isn't that, what the, isn't that what the Bible said? Then what happened? He took them out to Bethany and he blessed them. So the principle we can find there, Miss Jessica, is that when we open our minds and have an open mind towards the thing of God, the things of God, we may not necessarily agree with it, but whenever we say, God, you're right, I'm wrong, repent of what I was and what I think, and say, God, I'm going with you, the blessings show up. Now, I don't live the way I do, Brother Matt. I don't do the things I do to be blessed of God. That's just a perk that I get for trusting in who He is. That's like I, I, I didn't get saved to go to heaven. I got saved because I was a sinner. I got saved and I know that I needed forgiveness of my sin. Heaven's a perk. I get to sit here and serve God. I get to tell people about Jesus. I get to I get to preach his word. I get to just be with his we with his family. Man, I'm telling you, that right there is a perk. James 4 8, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Nothing draws us close to the Lord and empowers us more than responding to God's truth. That's why he says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. What you draw nigh to is what you will love. I promise you that. Brother Matt, if I draw nigh to something, that's where my heart's going to be. That's why the Bible tells us, lay not our treasures here on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, nor do thieves break, or, and thieves break through and steal. He says, brother, lay up your treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt, nor do thieves break through and steal. He said, lay them up there, and that's where our, that's where our treasures should be, is in heaven. And if my treasures are in heaven, then I'm drawing nigh to God. And the scripture tells me there in James that Brother Mike, if I draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh. That's a promise, by the way, Miss Jill. That's not, Brother Larry, it's a promise to the point. He says, if you do it, I'll do it. It's a promise. Are you thankful for the promises of God's word? We like those good ones, don't we? Let me ask you this. That's a sweet promise the Lord gives us. How many of us adhere to it? How many of us draw nigh to God, even in troubled times? How do any of us draw nigh to God even when things are going great? It's easy to praise Him on the mountain. It's easy to look for Him in the valley. But how about those middle times, Brother Matt? Do we draw nigh to God to help us through these things? Is what James says, draw nigh to God. Drawing nigh to God would come from a biblical response to a mind being open to truth and then properly responding to that, that calling, that truth. 
In verse 51 of our text, in Luke 24, in verse 51, the Bible says, And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, verse 52, and returned to Jerusalem sad. Is that what your Bible says? No. Returned to Jerusalem with great joy. See, the fruit of having an open mind is a closeness to God. Having that closeness to God produces a worship and it produces true biblical joy. We've talked in Galatians 5 a few times concerning the fruits of the Spirit. Brother Matt, we talk about joy. And joy is a fruit of the Spirit of a child of God. If I stood up here and preached, every time you saw me, I looked like I was mad at the world. <laughs> would you think I had much joy? Well, I'm talking every time you saw me. Would you think I had much joy? Of course not. If I told you I'm saved and love Jesus, can't wait to go to heaven when I die. Boy, this is good. Oh, good serving Lord. Forgive me, I'm going to struggle in believing you. There ought to be some kind of joy about us. Because the joy isn't mine. The joy comes from the Lord. And so that's where my joy should be, Brother Reggie. And that is something that I should portray to this world. Isn't that, in what we're talking about right here, in Luke 52, he says, they went to Jerusalem with great joy. Now here's the Savior, just to send it up into heaven. No longer would they saw him get crucified, saw him get buried. Their little minds could not comprehend that. And then here we go. He comes back, shows them like, ah, we think it's a spirit. And then he opens their understanding. Remember the Mike Brown, when their, their understanding's open, they have great joy when they see who he is. See guys, when we will open our under, allow him to open our understanding and we will trust scripture for what scripture says. Don't try, don't try to make scripture make sense in, in, in modern day vernacular because it's not going to. Amen. I can't, I can't understand in my mind, brother Mike, why he would love me still to this day. I'll never understand that. I'm glad he does. I don't understand why he'd forgive me. Miss Jill, knowing what I was going to be after he saved before he saved me, and then even what I'm going to be after he saved me, he still forgave me, still loved me, didn't turn me away when I came to him. When he called on, when he had a man preach unto me, Jesus, and I came to him, he didn't say, no, not this one. He's not the elect. Move him over there. <laughs> I'm glad Jesus died for all yeah, the amen. world. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not whosoever is elect. Why do I got to call on the Lord if I'm elect? That's another message another day. I'm sorry. Y'all got me on that. Y'all quit that, Brother Matt. I saw you egging me on right there. Having the fruit of an open mind is a closeness with God and produces worship. Verse 53. Notice where they were after this. Every now and then they went to the temple. Is that what your Bible says? No, it says that we're continually in the temple. Praising and blessing God. Amen. We saw the need to have an open mind. We saw the process of having an open mind. Finally, we'll finish right here at the enemy of an open mind. Go with me to Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4. Brother Reggie, that's going to be in the Old Testament, buddy. <laughs> Hosea chapter 4. We're almost finished, I promise. Familiar portion of Scripture, but I do want you to look at it. <clears throat> Here's the enemy of us having an open mind. You with me in verse number six. Hosea four, verse six. My people, 
are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. The lack of knowledge existed because of a rejection of that knowledge. This would be a Christian closing their mind to the truth of God's word. It happens when we're pre uh, presented with truth from the word. We make the decision whether, Brother Reggie, whether we're going to embrace the truth or Brother Mike Brown, whether we're going to reject the truth of God. We make that decision. Are we going to embrace or reject? Have an open mind or a closed mind? God then makes a decision based on the decision in which we've made. Okay, understand that. Based on, what did he say there? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. What did he say next? If you've rejected knowledge, I will reject thee. So, did God automatically jump out and say, I'm going to reject you, Mike Brown? Nope. You just presented with truth. And whenever you said no, he rejects you. You say, will God do that? Well, He just did. Y'all ever heard about, y'all ever read in Scripture where God turned them over to a reprobate mind? That means He's done with them. He's as done with them as a doctor is a dead man. A doctor cannot help a dead man. He's done. And that's what He's saying. He said, you reject the truth. You reject knowledge. Hey, church, when we reject truth, when we reject knowledge, when we have a closed mind to the preached Word of God, we have a closed mind to the written and the read Word of God, I'm going to tell you tonight, we're closing our minds off. Closing our minds off. We're rejecting truth. Now, God makes His decision according to our decision. We forfeit so much when we close our mind off as His people. We forfeit so much. We allow our flesh. We allow our stubbornness. We allow our rebellion. And all those things prevent us from having an open mind. And Brother Mike, if I've got a closed mind, then I'm not receptive to the Word of God. I should be receptive to His Word. I should be receptive to His will. And I should be receptive to his ways. And any time one of those three fail, I've closed my mind off to the truth of God's word. It explains Paul's plea to the Christian at Rome, and we're done. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's his plea. That's my plea this evening. That's God's plea with his children this evening. He's saying, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. He said, I want you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. But you cannot do that having a closed mind. You cannot fully sacrifice your life and your body to the Lord until you have an open mind. And then you may open, that you may sacrifice your body that you may sacrifice your life to Him. You'll present your bodies that living sacrifice. It means dying to yourself, dying to this world, dying to your own desires, which is acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, i got a question for you. We'll finish up. After all we've heard this evening, we've talked about the need, we talked about the process, and we talked about the enemy tonight of us having an open mind. After all I've talked about tonight, do we have an open mind? It's real easy to have one sitting in here. It's real easy to have one amongst the brethren. It's real easy to have one until we go out there. But Don, when I get out there, I'm faced with things I'm not faced in here. See, it's real easy to praise the Lord in here. It's real easy to stand up and thank God for all that He's done in our lives in here. It's real easy to talk about witnessing in here and real easy to talk about the truth in here. And Brother Mike, it's real easy to 
have those desires in here. But Miss Jill, do our desires continue when we go out there? Do we have an open mind? Heads bowed, eyes closed this evening.